I want to thank you all for joining me today as we get into the Word of God. I want to talk about guarding our hearts and what that looks like because uh, we know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, that uh, whenever we allow outside voices, just, you know, the, the storms of life to come in and affect our heart, that it affects everything. And I mean, we are in this time where we have so many opinions, uh, so much communication and ways to communicate with one another, and it can just be overwhelming, where it's an onslaught of just chatter. And within that, we have um, a call on our lives to guard our heart and to set up proper boundaries so that we can live healthy and whole and truly receive from God's word and hear his voice above all else. So this is something that I myself, I have uh, been studying out and positioning my myself in this place of I will guard my heart. Why? Well, because God, you have a plan for my life and you have a plan for today and I can't allow anything else to come in and distract me, to confuse me, to still kill or destroy. From that, uh, I have too many people counting on me. You're like, what? Yeah, I have four children. I have a husband. You know, I, I've got people in my sphere that are counting on me to guard my heart so that out of it, uh, you know, there's a spring of life that comes out of, out, of my, out of my voice and that I'm speaking from a place of wisdom, which we'll get into that here in a second. Uh, but, you know, what you're putting inside of you right now, when you're pressed, when you're squeezed, when you're crushed, which is going to happen, that's what's going to come out. Whatever you have placed in is what will come forth. Um, and the, you guys, I mean, this is on us. This is on us making that choice to not just allow any old thing to come in and determine uh, the quality of our life. This is the quality of our life. And everything that we reproduce comes from this. So here we go. Proverbs chapter 4, beginning in verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. All right, what's life to those and find them to, to those who find them and health to all their flesh? Well, let's keep reading. Keep your heart with all diligence. This is our main scripture verse for this devotion. For out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. So we see Solomon telling his son, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flow the, sp the issues of life, or out of it will spring the issues of life. And uh, when we see the word heart here, and we break this down in the Hebrew, that actually is talking about your, uh, um, your will, your emotions, your thought life, Okay, uh, that's, that's what that word means. Actually, I broke it down, and here we go. Uh, it's your inner man, your mind, your will, your heart, your understanding, the inner part or the midst. So uh, let's go break it down a little bit further. The midst of things, the heart of, of who you are, the soul or the heart of man, your mind, your knowledge, your thinking, your reflection, your memory, guarding your heart from uh, past memories. Listen, this breaks it down. We'll get a little further. Uh, the inclination or resolution or determination of your will, your conscience, the moral character of your heart, uh, as your appetites, your emotions and possessions, or as a seat of courage. You see, there is weight behind uh, this scripture when he says, uh, above all else, guard your heart, what we just broke down for out of it are the issues of life or out of it springs the issues of life. So whenever you guard your heart, you're guarding your conscience. You're guarding yourself from past memories. Uh, this is your thought life, right? Your emotions. What motivates you? What possibly will control or pour into the rest of your life? 
Proverbs 23, 7, it says, as for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If you just allow any old thought to come in and you plant that inside of your heart, then you begin to believe that about yourself. Your thoughts, this leads to your attitudes, ultimately your actions of how you respond to people each day. In the morning, before I get out of bed, this is something I've been doing for quite a while now. Uh, before I do anything else, I go ahead and position my heart to hear from the voice of God. And I begin to guard it from anything that would try, you know, listen, we can pop our eyes open first thing and immediately we just start believing lies about our day. So I just go ahead and this is exactly what I say. I say this every single day. Lord, I love you and I thank you for loving me. I am a receiver of your love and God, I receive every good gift that you have for me today. And, and I start my day off right of positioning my heart before the Lord. Why? Because I know out of this springs the issues of life, that everything else will come out of that. How I treat others through the day, how I treat my children, my husband, how I treat you, how uh, I minister, my, my attitudes towards myself, of what I believe I can do, how productive I am. Break it down. Think about this. I mean, it says above all else. So let's let's go and break this down a little bit. So in this word, in the verbiage, I'm going to break some of these words down in the Hebrew. Um, so keep your heart with all the diligence. This is in the New King James Version. For out of it spring the issues of life. So with all, when you break this down in the Hebrew, that means, so when he says keep your heart with all diligence, with all means the whole. What's the whole? Sometimes you're like, oh yeah, the whole. No, 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 no. Have you ever eaten a whole piece of cake and all of it goes inside of you? Well, it's all, cons it's all consuming. You didn't leave anything out. That's what we're talking about here. In everything, entirety, throughout, all your concerning of everything, everywhere, all things, always, anyone, that whole actually means with people, all men continually life and for a lifetime. Hi, Carly. Hello. Then he says, uh, so, okay, so it's, do you have that picture now of, of all, this is all encompassing the whole part of your life. So let's keep going. Uh, I hope you have your Bibles out with me because it'll make it a lot easier if you follow with me in this. So keep your heart with all. We recognize that's whole. Diligence. This word diligence uh, means to guard or to watch observance or a place of confinement, jail, prison, or custody. High five. All right, here we go. Scooch out. Okay. With all diligence, we might need to go over that again. Uh, <laughs> to guard, watch, to ob the observance, place of confinement, jail, prison, or custody. That means this means serious business. Keep your heart with all diligence. The entirety of it, that means that, you know what he says to take every thought captive, Right? that you put this into confinement. Listen, you have put a blockade that nothing is coming in that uh, can try to harm you or hurt you or steal, kill and destroy from your life. You have chosen that you will guard your emotions. You will guard your will, your mind. You will guard yourself. And, uh, and then how do we do that? Well, he says, right, well, your heart, your inner man, that's your mind, your will, your heart. Uh, why do we do this? He said, in the word spring, uh, that word in the Hebrew means an outgoing extremity, perhaps a source or escape. Because out of this, it's an outgoing from, your, from who you are, from your life. Out of guarding your heart. You know, we do this because everything comes from it. It's making Jesus Lord over your heart. A few scriptures to back this up. Proverbs 23, 15 through 16. It says, my son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself, yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your, when your lips speak right things. 
I mean, you have a choice for your heart to be wise. Yes, as a matter of fact, we know in the book of James, we can pray and ask for, for wisdom by faith and he will give us all the wisdom that we need. You see, there is scripture that you can grab a hold of and receive and apply in order to guard your heart. The Lord's actually given us spiritual armor in Ephesians chapter six to put on every day. You've got the breastplate of righteousness. To Why, why do we need that? To know that we are right standing uh, in God through Christ Jesus and that that we've put that piece of armor on to guard our heart against the lies of the enemy of shame of guilt of condemnation of feeling like you're you're not good enough or that you're always a failure you're never going to make it or you know blah 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 i'm not you know downplaying what's happening but i'm letting you know that you can put a stop to it you have authority in the name of Jesus on what comes in I've had a season in my life where the Lord was like, stop thinking about that. I mean, that's specifically what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, you're done. Stop thinking about it. I know I, I told someone that one time and they were like, how do you do that? It's so hard. It's not in our strength. It's in his strength. And it's really by putting on that armor, that helmet of salvation. It's by recognizing you have the mind of Christ and it's renewing your mind every day to the word of God and allowing God's word to transform your thoughts. So a part of guarding our heart is getting in the word of God and you keep God's word in the midst of your heart. That God's word is life to, to who you are, to your body, your innermost being, to your emotions, your mind. God's word is medicine to you today medicine to me today, to my family, to do a restoration and a healing work in our lives. A few of my other favorite scriptures that go along with this, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. That's good, isn't it? Proverbs chapter 15, 13 and 15. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Verse 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who has a merry heart has a continual, has a continual feast. So in breaking this down, that the word merry heart in both of these scriptures means a glad, joyful, pleased. Actually, I love it says glad, joyful, pleased, rejoice, rejoiced, rejoices, and rejoicing. It covered every aspect of rejoicing, those who delight or show joy. So a part of guarding our heart is then choosing to have a merry heart and to rejoice in moments. And it's not just a rejoicing, it's a rejoicing in the Lord, right? You have joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. This goes back to being led by the Spirit of God. You see, it's all encompassing. You all, this is just choosing to live for Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you up full and overflowing so that you are able to guard your heart through the Word of God by the power of the Holy Ghost and receive every good gift that God has for you today. So it's making a choice of saying, God, I will guard my heart. And first, it's waking up to it, to the recognition that you need to. And then we put a stop to allowing any outside voice, right? It says, with all, dil all diligence, confinement, jail, prison, you're saying, mm -mm, shut down, lockdown mode. You're not coming in. I'm setting up healthy boundaries in my life. And the only voice I hear is the voice of God. And it's by his Holy Spirit that I'm going to receive and operate and have the fruits of the Spirit flourishing in my life. Um, I hope you guys have been following along with me. I know I get passionate and I just, I just start talking and moving, but I've just, I've been meditating on this because I am tired of feeling tired every day and what God's calling me to do. And out of the, out of this, I think for me, the greatest thing has been, I will rejoice in the Lord. And Lord, I am guarding my heart of, of that innermost being, my emotions, that they will only be led and directed by your word, by your voice. And that means that I'm going to have to meditate on this and, uh, and live it. And when I do, oh, praise God, we're going to see fruit and it's beautiful. 
and then those around us, those that are constantly picking from our fruits, right? We bear good fruit and the people around us pick it. Well, then, you know what we do? We just keep getting fueled up and they keep picking and we keep producing. And then, you know, maybe we'll pick from someone else's. And then it's just a beautiful cycle of loving one another in Christ Jesus and choosing to allow the Lord to be Lord over our lives. So anyway, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me this week. Um, it's going to be a great week. God is so faithful. He loves you so much. Make a choice today. Lord, I will guard my heart, right? Before you even put your feet on the bed in the morning, you have already began that process. And you, you recognize the, the schemes and attacks of the enemy. You get that full armor on. If you need to go to Ephesians 6, brush up on it, what it looks like, do it, okay? Press in, hook arms with someone. Uh, hook arms with your spouse. If that's who it needs, you know, if you haven't, you need to do it. And choose to believe the truth of God's word over the lies of the enemy because he's just a dirty, filthy liar and he can't tell the truth. But God's word is true. It's alive. It's for you. And just choose to receive it today. All right. I love you guys. And I'll see you soon. Bye.